Good. Hello, everybody. Uh, Mike, my name is Mike Garceau. I'm with 3M. Uh, very delighted to be here. Uh, it's been fun to join with everybody. Um, you might be aware already that 3M has been participating in the Open Compute community for a number of years now, uh, mostly through our interconnect products. You can see our booth over there. Uh, but today we're signaling a shift and an acceleration for how we work with the Open Compute community. Uh, and I want to describe that to you and why. Uh, our intention is to work with some of our partners and recruit collaborators and those that are already in this community to form an ecosystem uh, for immersion cooling of, of servers and compute equipment. And um, the intention is to have uh, optimized designs, hardware, solution providers, uh, configurations that take advantage of the unique properties of immersion cooling uh, to provide total cost of ownership benefits, uh, performance benefits, and a solution set that's compliant with Open Compute's uh, design and objectives. The, so that's the what. Uh, the more important part or the more fun part is the why. Uh, why do we think this should be an interest to you? Why are we devoting our time and our energy towards this? And um, I wanted to explain that to you in our time here. Um, so first, I think maybe this community is probably better than any other at, at thinking forward uh, about the future state for where our, we're going to be from a societal and a technological perspective. Uh, and all the changes that are going to happen from uh, a move towards a data and um, computationally enhanced society. But then work backwards from that future state and think about the, the technological advancements that need to happen from a infrastructure and from a hardware perspective. And it is our conclusion and our analysis that there needs to be step change innovations that enable that future state. And, and it are, it's our belief that immersion cooling is part of that, te that technological step change uh, that can enable that. Um, and what a, I, well, we're never going to make a claim without having some support. So I want to present three, three pieces of evidence to support that, that conclusion that, that uh, immersion cooling is a part of that solution set. Uh, first, uh, you'll see at our booth, we're demonstrating a, um, a high density immersion optimized power supply that achieves optimal performance uh, because of the thermal characteristics achievable with immersion. So please come by our booth uh, and check that out. Uh, second, we're presenting at 2.30 today in one of the workshops. Uh, we've designed, uh, work, worked with some of our partners to envision a high density immersion optimized data center at a facility scale to characterize the cost savings that are achievable with immersion cooling. So we're presenting those findings uh, for your scrutiny and for your feedback. And finally, uh, where I want to devote most of our time is uh, for your viewing and while you're eating pleasure, uh, we've compiled uh, a documentary. So a small video uh, where we've asked some of the, the, the thought leaders in the industry to characterize their view on this future state and what are the technologies that need to get there. And then we characterize uh, what, what role immersion cooling uh, fits into that, into that narrative and into that technological arc. So that's the, the extent of my introductory comments. The rest is going to be the video playing. Uh, please do come to our engineering workshop. Please come to our booth and talk to us more about this. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
in this period of global digital transformation, where the entire world's economy, with no exception, is data-driven, there is going to be no slowing down of the growth in data or the technology that supports and enables and propels it. I think we're really just at the beginning of, of the, the real data explosion. In the past, before we had digital cameras, there was a cost to buying the film, a cost to processing, a cost to printing. Now it's almost free. The cost to me of having 100,000 pictures on my phone, I don't really notice it, so the demand just goes up through the roof. The common understanding today is we need to double food production by 2050. And we're going to do that. There's no more land. In fact, it's less land every year. So we're going to do it by being smarter. We're going to farm smarter. We're going to use our resources more carefully. And analytics and data are going to be the key to make that happen. We are recording more and more things that we do every day. And it's almost like your phone and your Fitbit that records your steps and your movements every day. We're able to put that type of technology into our farm equipment. This concept and phenomenon of more and more and more data to, to, to process, to, to, to feedback, to improve things, comes with both great opportunity but also challenges. I think a lot of people don't realize that the importance of data centers and what data centers provide in their life, just like a lot of kids don't know where their food comes from. If you can think of it as just processing power for all of this data to get from point A to point B where it's intended to go. You can wander around the, the financial core of any major uh, city in the world and you'll see these massive buildings with blacked out windows. Those are data centers. So now you're imagining a lot of servers, they're in these 19 inch racks, there's racks after racks and rows after rows. And the challenge is, how do we manage our carbon footprint? So approximately 2% of the U.S.'s electrical energy goes to data centers. And if you think about it, 2% sounds like a small number, but that's more energy than most states use. Well, the um, carbon footprint um, of the data center industry being larger than um, uh, the airline industry is, of course, very concerning. We definitely see that there's a continuing trend of data centers having an even greater carbon footprint in the future. Data centers always have to be on. Whether they're being utilized or not, they're always turned on. They're always consuming energy. And that energy, of course, comes from a, a variety of, of sources that can produce carbon emissions. There are more renewables on the grid today than ever before, and we've been becoming much smarter about that. The fact is that still fossil fuel is the primary fuel for all the power generation. When it comes to data center operations, about 38% of the electricity need to run the operation is just to cool the electronics. You today have an entire industry standardized on air conditioning. And this is because we have so much experience with it. It's very reliable. However, it still is inefficient. There's, for example, a study um, uh, analyzing how much um, uh, uh, cooled air is required to cool down a high density rack of 20 kilowatts. That would generate wind speeds of about 35 miles per hour. That would be about the same as if you would drive your car and put your hand outside. It's a really an insane amount of energy being required for air cooling. People are trying to put these data centers underground because it's cool, out on, out on the ocean on a barge, underwater, in the Arctic. And those are symptoms of the fact that a technology is really needed that can be used everywhere. Because in fact, where this is all going, the data needs to be processed closer and closer to where the data is generated and used. Everything we're doing to minimize the energy footprint of data centers is great and we're continuing to make strides, but we're then coming to a crossroads where we're going to need something new, you know, something different to, to help maintain and reduce that energy footprint. Back in 2012, uh, we set up our company in Hong Kong uh, purely for the purpose of uh, Bitcoin mining. At the beginning, we were still considering actually using air conditioning for cooling our Bitcoin mine. We quickly realized that in the subtropical climate in Hong Kong, 
it would be very difficult to run um, air conditioning very efficiently. Something unique happened in 2012. Two young entrepreneurs approached us, had seen some videos on immersion, and were intrigued by the possibilities of using it in, a, in Bitcoin mining. When we took a deeper look into 3M fluids with thermal immersion cooling, we're quite uh, fascinated actually by the possibilities. So immersion cooling actually submerges the IT equipment in a liquid so that the liquid is coming in contact with the electronic equipment and go, whoa, wouldn't there be sparks would be flying? Well, the liquid that we're using is a non-conductive fluid and therefore that can touch the IT equipment and cool it directly. Fluid immersion is where you have fewer mechanical moving parts, fewer electronics, everything about it is simpler. Instead of spreading out the electronics so that you could air cool it, you just pack them together because it's gonna be cooled through this, this fluid. You can take what was going to take 100% of the space and put it in 10% of the space and being able to reduce the electricity usage for cooling by 95%. And this allows us to shrink down the entire data center size to only a fraction of what um, would be if you would run a data center with uh, traditional air cooling. That paired with the much uh, more efficient cooling methodology of immersion cooling really convinced us that this was uh, the right path to go. So you have best-in-class power density coupled with best-in-class energy efficiency and dramatically simplified design. Well, it's exciting to be able to partner with multiple organizations the industry has uh, a, a wide variety of skills and experience and it's wonderful to be able to see those skills come together to accelerate improvement. Personally, of course, uh, it's very interesting making um, uh, potentially a big impact on um, uh, the carbon footprint of data centers um, uh, in the world. Not only something for, for our generation, but hopefully also for the next generation so that um, uh, we have um, uh, more sustainable, more energy efficient data centers. To enable that progress by something that physically cools the equipment to allow it to happen, we have a lot of hope for the future that that progress will, will take many forms and impact many people. Now it is right at the forefront of every single business. Right? And it doesn't take much digging to say, okay, how are you solving for power effectiveness. This is a great time to be in this industry. We can make a decision and have a better outcome predictably. And that's what's got me excited about the future. If we feed the world, we're going to keep feeding the world when technology is going to lead us that way.